Wouldn't it be cool if we could have computers generate music for us? That was the premise of Sam Agnew's recent post on the Twilio blog. It uses Magenta from TensorFlow to generate music using Python. Let's see how it works. We'll start by creating a new directory called Magenta Music, and then we'll create a virtual environment inside of this directory and activate the virtual environment. Next, we use pip to install Magenta. Now, this is going to take a while. So uh, install version 0 0.4.0 and maybe run and grab a coffee or whatever beverage you'd like. I'll be here. It's going to take a little bit. OK, cool. So it's all installed. Let's take a look at what we're working with here. Magenta has a bunch of pre-trained models uh, that we can use. And we're going to use the basic, the look back, and the attention models. You can download these either from the Magenta GitHub uh, repository or down in the video description for this video, I have all of the files you need as well. So either way, make sure you get them and bring them over into your project directory. That's that Magenta music directory that we just created since we're going to use them from the base directory. All right, the first model we're going to take a look at is the basic model. It pretty much just does a one-to-one, -one, pretty simplistic look at the notes that are specified and tries to figure out uh, what to play just almost on a note-by-note -note basis. So pretty simplistic in its approach. Let's see what we can do with it, though. For all of these, we're going to be using the melody underscore rnn underscore generate function that is just going to take some input and generate uh, an amount of music that we specify. I'm going to say that we're going to use the basic underscore rnn configuration using the bundle file that you can download in the description below, basic underscore, basic underscore rnn dot mag. Then we specify an output directory for where to put the generated MIDI files. I'm going to put them in sla dot slash output slash generated. We're going to specify a number of outputs, so it's going to generate 10 MIDI files. And the number of steps, these are 16th note steps, we want 128. That gives us eight measures. And for the primer melody, we're going to specify this format here that says to use middle C. So we're only telling it to use middle C on a piano. And let's generate it and see what we get out of this. So if we head into the output generated, we can see that it generated 10 files. And let's just open one of these up inside of uh, garage. I'm on a Mac, so I'll open up in GarageBand. So let's see what the first one looks like. You can see the piano roll down here. And let's give it a play. So you can see it's not super sophisticated. It's almost uh, like guessing what to play, almost like you're picking random notes. Let's take a look at another one. I'll look at the score on this one. All right, so that's all for the basic one. Let's take a look at another model. The loop back takes a look at uh, patterns that occur over the course of one or two measures in a song. If you head to the blog post here, you can get to from the GitHub page. Uh, this has a lot of details into how Lookback RNN works. Uh, highly recommend. I'll put the link to this blog post down in the description. It covers both loopback and attention. And there's some samples that they've generated uh, using these models in that blog post as well. well. Let's see what we can do with it. So we're going to once again use the melody underscore rnn underscore generate function. This time, though, we're going to specify uh, that we're going to use the look back model, uh, specifying both the config and the bundle file, uh, and we'll leave everything else set the same. OK, so 10 files, uh, eight bars each from middle C once again. This time it's going to take a look at patterns that it's generated over the previous one and two bars. Hopefully we get something that starts to look a little more uh, sophisticated. So let's go into the output, look back and open up a couple of these files. Let's take a look at the first one that got generated.
Well, we definitely have repetition this time. <laughs> Maybe a little too much repetition. Let's take a look at uh, another file just to see if it fared any better. We'll open the fifth song that was generated. Okay, so Look Back definitely did a better job of looking at structure in the song by looking at the previous two bars. What if we could look even farther? That's what attention does. It looks at a bunch of previous steps and runs it through some sophisticated math to figure out what note to play next. So let's use attention this time to generate another 10 MIDI files based on middle C and see if we come up with anything better. All right, so we'll generate our melodies and head into the attention output file. And we've got our 10 MIDI files, so let's go ahead and see what we get. Let's open the first one. Okay, so you can see it's locking into patterns a lot more now with the attention. So let's open another one. This is the second file. As you can see, the songs that are generated with attention are much more sophisticated. Let's see what happens if we just let it run wild by only providing it a couple notes. These are the first two notes of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. I got the idea from the blog post we were just looking at. Here's what those sound like the way I played them. And again, just one more time so you can hear it. Okay, so that's what we're going to be using to generate our song here. Uh, everything's going to be specified exactly the same as we've been doing. Uh, in, in fact, exactly the same way we did for attention.mag. But this time, instead of specifying just a single note, we're actually going to prime it with a MIDI file. So our last thing that we pass into it will be the twinkle.mid file that's in the download down in the description. And here's that last parameter where we're passing in primer underscore MIDI equals twinkle dot mid. You'll also notice that I'm generating 20 songs this time instead of just 10. That was just to see if we could get some additional variety. All right, all 20 songs have been generated. So let's see what we got. Uh, we'll change directories into the output slash twinkle generated and open up our first file. Let's see what we got. Computer generated music. Hey, that's pretty cool, actually. It's got a pretty good beat to it. In fact, I think it would actually loop pretty nicely, so let's see what that sounds like. That's pretty impressive coming just from a couple notes. Let's try another one. And let's try looping this one this time just to see what it sounds like.
All right, you get the idea. It's almost like a different musician did this one. That's the basics of generating music using Magenta. If you're looking for some more things to check out with Magenta, head over to the Magenta page. I put the link down in the description below. There's a bunch of demos and videos of showing off what other people have done with it. I truly invite you to explore it. We'll be back with more videos soon for more things you can do with TensorFlow, Magenta, and music generation. Until then, I'm out of here.